before I came to the U.S. I thought my high school and college life here would be like those scenes from American teen movies. Now the college diploma that I'm holding in my hands seems more like a certificate that testifies I've wasted four of my most precious years of my life on schools which I've learned nothing from. No precious memories were made, no exciting stories to tell, no people to reminisce about. No friends to take a graduation picture with. April fourteenth was my twenty-second birthday. I spent it along like every other year. Forgotten since when, I no longer look forward to my birthday. Instead of using it as a legit excuse to seek attention, it felt like more of a reminder that I spent another year of my life achieved nothing. Nothing exciting happened. No crush contacted me. No long-lost friends re-emerged. Looking at the few menial greetings from the people I don't really care about, I should probably call my birthday "Loser Awareness Day." I had no prospect or hope for the future. All I felt was that I'm now one year older, one year closer to death. I'm sick and tired of New York City. I never took the yellow cabs because I can never afford it. In fact, Uber and Lyft are luxuries too. I rarely eat in a restaurant because they are too expensive, and I don't have anyone to dine with anyway. All the street food are overpriced, and they are not even tasty. I'm tired of the incomprehensible long durations of the renovations of the public facilities, like metro stations and parks. I'm tired of the frequent delays and long time intervals of subways. I'm tired of the scattered coins in my wallet and the expensive subway rides. I'm tired of the exclusive clubs that I'm too poor to attend. I'm tired of being too lowly to fit in the higher classes. Damn, it sucks to be poor and stupid. I guess when people say New York City is fun. It's only fun for the rich who can afford things. I don't belong here. That has always been the thought in my head. I dragged my worn-out body across the Manhattan downtown area like a brain-dead zombie. I saw many white collars sitting outside having lunch. I sensed the corporate ladders and office politics, meaningless monkey works and pretentious outfits. I don't want to be one of them. Well, it's not like that. I can. I've sent out around one thousand resumes for the past two years. Ended up with a few failed interviews, an internship that basically used me as free labor, and a temporary staffing job that fired me after two weeks. I walked into the subway station. The train was delayed once again. The running rats, the disgusting smell. And the crowded people looking down at their phones, heading to somewhere hastily, as if they have a goal in their life, utterly oblivious of the mouse race that they are in. And I don't really have any friends. Sure, I have acquaintances, but we never hang out. I never got invited to anything. I never had anyone to talk to when I'm down and sad. I'm neither low enough to fit in with the ambitious losers who settle on alcohol and weed, nor high enough to fit in with the higher, wealthier, more influential circles. I don't belong to any community. I cannot find my place in this city of 8.5 million people. I used to have a list of my top 10 best friends. However, throughout the years, I've crossed each of them out one by one. Till today, I don't consider myself having a friend. Most of the friendships with my former best friends ended sour, because I found out that they are not my true friends. They are not there for me when I needed them the most. Whereas I would do anything for them when they need my help. They won't do the same thing that I would do for them. I consider them as my best friend. But they will never say or think the same. 
I don't know where I did wrong. It seems like the more people know about me, the less they like me. I remember one day I suddenly realized that the people I get along with the most are the people who'd get along with anyone. They're just nice to everyone in general. And I mistakenly think that I was a special friend to them, like the way I treated them. Turns out I'm just a weirdo that nobody understands or cares. Dating life here is even worse. I've been to 28 countries, and New York City is the one of the hardest places to date, if not the most. The girls are not pretty in the first place. Yet they have that haughty vibe like they are some shit. I don't know how, but I never had any luck with the girls here. I've been rejected in all the ways you can think of. I call it the New York City curse. Thank God I've traveled abroad, otherwise, my self esteem would be destroyed. Given that the girls make up a large proportion of my happiness, I always lament that the saddest thing about my life so far is that I'm trapped in the hardest place to get girls at my horniest age. I got off the subway and came to the park by my house to play handball. There I saw the guys whom I play with all the time. To be honest, their faces, their words, and their behavior disgusts me. The mannerlessness, the cheating, the uneducated conversations. The weed they smoke all the time make me feel repulsed. I can't seem to find any common topic with them other than the sport itself. I'm tired of the life of chastity and depression. Yet I have no courage to just fall into a depraved and degenerated life like them. I always stay as far as I can when they pass that joint around, laughing together. I want to find like minded people who strive like me, share the same values with me. But either I don't find any, or they simply don't want to hang out with me. I don't want to concede and compromise to life. Yet everything here tells me that I'm deluded and painfully wrong. Giving up is so easy for me. I could easily forego everything I've held on to simply by taking a sip of alcohol. There's nothing wrong with the city. The only thing wrong is me. I am the sole constant factor in all my failures. After the handball game, I sat in the park alone. The temperature was falling, and the wind carried away all the heat from my body. One moment I seemed to understand why people would commit suicide, why people drink recklessly to stay away from soberness. And why people smoke weed to feel less sensitive and react slower? Because life is hard. People can't always get what they want. Let me ask you a question. Do you think that the people who committed suicide is it because they cannot get over it, or it is actually because they got over it? I find that all the things that I've been pursuing, like traveling the world, chasing girls, striving for success, after all, are all inherently meaningless. I'm talking about existential crisis and nihilism. A hollow emptiness filled up my heart. It's so heavy that I could feel it weighing down. All this time, I assumed that there was more to me than what everyone thought. But maybe there isn't. I'm just as hopeless as the people I despise. I turn off the lights and lie quietly on my bed. I'm so tired that I cannot sleep. Good thing that the day always ends, and tomorrow's always gonna be a new day. After all, nothing is forever in this world. Not even our problems. Myself. It's all I hear right now. It's all I hear right now. I wanna 